Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today I'm going to go over a very basic technique for applying plug-ins on cables. It's absolutely essential and I know I've covered this material before, but I've had several people write me recently saying that they did not know the correct way to do a plug-in. So, because of that, we're going to go ahead and take this moment. I'm going to show you real quick how to do an IEC. Uh, no, I'll probably do a regular NEMA plug-in, uh, 15 amp. So I'm going to go ahead and cut one off. We're going to do it from scratch, show you top to bottom how to do it. Coming up next, right here on Better Biomed. Okay guys, here we go. I've got a couple different types of plugins here. These are all, well, no, this one here's a 20 amp. Here's a 15 amp. Here's a hospital grade 15 amp. And we also have uh, this style connector right here, which is your IEC female connector. You can get replaceable ones of these as well. I think I actually have one floating around here someplace. Um, but anyway, it doesn't matter what end of the cord you're working with there is a correct way to install a cord. So I'm gonna show you a perfect example. Now this one here is a typical example of what I find when most people do plugins. And you can see that they are all terminated at equal lengths, which is a no-go. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and in order to do a plugin, you're gonna need a standard number two Phillips or a flat blade because most plugs are capable of using flat blade and I use two different types of wire cutters in the field I only use one but here I have the luxury of using two now I love the style wire cutter right here and wire stripper because uh, this one here allows me to cut the outer jacket and that's why I have it here on the table as a perfect example and for the sake of brevity we have the auto strippers, okay? So let's see, I've got one finished cord here, got one finished cord there. We're gonna go ahead and do this bad boy right here. So first step is I can see some oxidation on these. So there is no salvaging this. I always say, let's just clip them off, let's start again. That's what I'm gonna do now. So when you clip off a cord, check to make sure that the copper is nice and shiny. If the copper that you just clipped is not nice and shiny, that means that it's got some sort of oxidation or, or heat damage, and you'll have to cut back even further. These ones here are very shiny, so we're good to go. One of the first things that I do is I'm gonna cut back about an inch and a half to two inches. Let's go right back here. You can see how I use this to cut the outer jacket. just like so, and then without damaging the inner insulators, I bend it over just a little bit and just use the very nub. You can see I've got a technique down where I just bend it with my fingertips, just like so. Boop, there we go. And you can see I'm using my uh, crimpers on the auto strippers to uh, grab that outer jacket and pull it off. The shorter the strip piece is, the easier it is to pull off. Since I did a long inch and a half to two inch long piece, it was a little bit more of a bear. So I use this area back here to grab onto it. So the first thing that you have to do when you're dealing with a cord like this, cut them inch and a half to two inches. And then next thing I want you to do is take about a half an inch on both the black and the white in the United States. That is our color code for hot and neutral. And go ahead and cut those back about a half an inch. Just like so. All right. Nice and shiny conductor. We're good. So here's the big thing that a lot of people forget. I'm not going to forget, guys. I actually tell you what. Uh, let's just use a 20 amp plug-in. 
Now this cord cannot handle 20 amps, so this is normally a no-go, but I'm using this as an example. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and shove the outer jacket on. Okay, first step, don't forget this part. I know, I've done it plenty of times throughout my career as well. So you should have a set like that. Green's gonna be longer, and then the other two. Then I strip back about a half an inch to a quarter of an inch. There we go. It's looking really good. I give them a slight twist to keep all those conductor together. And then you have your plug end. So this one here is kind of a cheaper version. Is this one even hospital grade? I don't even know if this one's hospital grade. I don't think it is. That's okay. Um, tell you what, let's do it right. Let's do it right, guys. You can see I like using these number two stubbies. I have stabbed myself in the hand plenty of times throughout my career, and I have learned my lesson, so that's why I use stubbies when I'm doing plug-ins, which is also why I have one in my tool bag, because they're invaluable. I love these things. Okay, my strain relief, make sure you loosen it up quite a bit. All right, and you can see here on this example, you see how I've got the black and the white conductor going straight and how there's a little bit of a curly cue to the ground conductor. This one here was an example that was done for a class. Interesting thing was is I did not loosen up the neutral conductor and it fell off. You see that? So again, now I'm going to put all these together and very carefully put them through the outer plug body. There we go. Okay. So the general rule, connect the ground first, all right? You can see I'm loosening up all the terminal lugs. So they're good and ready. I connect the ground first always. So here we go. Make sure, uh, especially with these clear ones, that you get a good bite on the conductor. Sometimes you're going to be clamping down on the jacket of the insulator, and that will not be good. And you can see with the stubby, I'm able to put quite a bit of force on this guy. So now you have two more lugs here and here. One of them's brass, and one of them is shiny. The phrase is always gonna be, Black to brass, or it's your ass. So that's why you're hot. You always want it to go to the brass. Because that one there will have the best contact. There we go. And then the neutral. I'm trying to get this as good as I can for the camera, which is why it's a little awkward for me here. <laughs> All right, now I'm able to put quite a bit of force on that bad boy. Okay, so now you can see what I do with the green conductor. See how I kind of fold it up on itself like that? Now it's ready for the outer body to get slid up there's almost always an indexing point, which you can see right here to right here on the ground. Just slide it over like so until it index. Hold it with your hand to you secure the outer part of the plug body. And if you did not do these correctly, you'll see the outer jacket sticking out quite a bit and some exposed inner um, insulators. If you ever see that, what you're going to do, you don't have to re-terminate your conductors. 
what you're going to do is you're going to give your cord a slight twist, which will shorten it, and it will make the inner conductors kind of twist on each other. So just a slight twist while you're shoving in, and then you hold it and secure that strain relief. There we go. Excellent. So that looks really good. My outer jacket is way past the strain relief. It's up inside the plug body. So even though I cut them a little bit long, the outer jacket terminated right here by me doing that twist. It went all the way in to the inner part of the strain relief and I can see it in there. So that is as good as it's gonna get. Okay, once you have the cord re-terminated, always do an electrical safety on it, which means you're going to check the integrity of the ground conductor along with check your mains voltage to make sure you're getting full mains voltage and also check the polarity on your electrical safety analyzer. So by doing all of that, you are good to go to use this cord on a piece of medical equipment. All right, guys. Well, I hope you like this video. Short, simple, sweet, the correct way to do a plug end on a cord. That's all it takes. Thanks for watching, guys.